So today I have a max level P90. It's level 50, which is the highest level that you could achieve in order to unlock all of the attachments on this weapon. Now here is my recommended class setup, which is specifically designed to improve our aim down sight speed as much as possible for that cracked aim and maximize our time to kill potential. This is designed for more an aggressive play style for keeping those engagements up close and personal. So for the structure of the video, we're gonna be going over the weapon test data results. Then I'm gonna move on to the weapon attachments for this class setup and talk about why I chose each attachment and talk about some tips and tricks for how to maximize the overall use of this weapon. If you're part of the 90% that keep coming back to watch my videos, but you just haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss another video. The P90 is a very interesting weapon. On paper, it doesn't look that impressive, but the way it performs says otherwise. First, let's talk about the damage profiles. So it's a 40 damage to the head, 25 to the chest and 25 to the stomach so as you can see these numbers aren't exactly high as i was saying on paper it doesn't look that impressive so with these numbers in mind it's important to go for those headshots those headshots will give you a higher percentage of ending that gunfight a lot quickly versus when you're going for the body now as far as body shots goes it takes about four shots to kill from five to ten meters then five shots to kill from 15 meters and six shots to kill from 20 to 25 meters and last seven shots to kill from 30 to 50 meters however when you're talking about headshots it's three shots to kill from five to ten meters and four shots to kill from 15 to 25 meters then lastly five shots to kill from 30 to 50 meters now if we add stopping power to the mix we get three shots to kill from five to 20 meters, then four shots to kill from 25 to 30 meters, and then five shots to kill from 35 to 50 meters. Now, I also tested this as well with headshots, and surprisingly enough, there is no change. It's still gonna be the same amount of shots to kill, no matter from what range you're at, even if you have stopping power on this weapon. And I would just recommend using something like Dead Sounds instead, since we're trying to move around the map anyway and play a little bit more aggressive, it helps to have our footsteps silent. But that's just my personal preference if you want to run with stopping power and you want to win more gunfights more frequently then i would highly recommend putting on the stopping power field upgrade so you can reduce the amount of shots it takes to kill as much as possible now moving further with the amount of shots it takes to kill this just doesn't seem impressive it increases one shot per five meters this is really not that attractive on paper this is where things get interesting it shoots 915 rounds per minute this is incredibly fast this is the second fastest firing SMG behind the MP7. You won't even really notice the amount of shots it takes to kill because of how quick you're melting enemies. So I wanted to get down to the bottom of this and break down every single time to kill from all the different ranges. So it takes 131 milliseconds to get a headshot from five to 10 meters. So if you're playing up close and personal, always try to aim for the head and you will melt your enemy and win that gunfight as quick as possible. Then from five to 10 meters, it's 196 milliseconds to the body and 15 meters at 261 milliseconds then at 20 to 25 meters is 327 milliseconds then from 30 to 50 meters it's 392 milliseconds now i don't recommend trying to engage in these gunfights from that range but if you happen to do so that is the amount of time it would take to kill moving on to the recoil so the base recoil is actually not that bad as you can see there is a lot of vertical recoil here but the recoil path is pretty predictable it just goes straight up and diagonally to the right this is easily countered by just pulling down and a little bit to the left on your right thumbstick and you should be able to engage in long range gunfights if needed now this won't even really be noticeable when you're playing at close to medium ranges so the recoil is nothing really to worry about now as you can see the compensator does reduce that vertical recoil as much as possible compared to all the other attachments and second in line is the forged tack retribution which is to the right of the compensator if you combine the compensator in a forge tech retribution there isn't really much of a difference in vertical recoil between the two so i would conclude that using an attachment that claims to reduce recoil is not really that necessary especially at the expense of your movement speed as well as your aim down side speed moving on to the reload time the base reload time is about 2.10 seconds this is a bit on the slower side so when we add sleight of hand this reduces that reload time to 1.6 seconds and that's why i highly recommend putting on the sleight of hand perk just to be on the safer side so that you have as much ammo as possible in your reserve to be ready for the next gunfight so let's talk about the aim down sight speed so the base aim down sight speed of the p90 is 201 milliseconds which is still on the fast 
faster side. However, with the attachments that I do recommend, it brings that down to 150 milliseconds or 25% faster than the base aim down side speed. And this is absolutely incredible. Now, if you want to completely maximize the aim down side speed as much as you possibly can, if you take off the GI Mini Reflex and you just have the stippled grip tape, which is the rear grip, by the way, not the under barrel, and the tack laser, both combined will give you an aim down side speed of 134 milliseconds. This is 33% faster than the base aim down side speed at 201 milliseconds. So the choice is really up to you if you really feel like you need a sight on it or not. If you do prefer the iron sights, you will be aiming down your sights a lot faster. So the P90 does come with two barrels, the forged tack retribution, as well as the FSS 10.6 inch pro. However, there are cons of aim down side speed as well as your movement speed. It does increase your range by 30%, but this is not really that much. And like I said, with how fast this gun fires rounds per minute, it's really not even going to be noticeable, especially when you're keeping your engagements from short to medium range. These are not needed attachments, and I don't really recommend using them at all, especially if it decreases your movement speed by 4%. Moving on to the sprint to fire, the base speed is 174 milliseconds. When you add the stippled grip tape, which is the rear grip, by the way, I just want to emphasize that because there are two stippled grip tapes here. One is the under barrel and one is the rear grip. The one I'm talking about here is the rear grip and the fly strap stock attack. Attachment, this will bring your sprint to fire speed down to 131 milliseconds, which is 25% faster. Huge difference versus the base. Adding on to the fly strap stock attachment, it also does increase your strafe speed, making you 11.8% faster when you're strafing left and right. This will definitely give you an advantage over your enemies because they're not going to be able to lock onto you as easy and it's going to make you a harder target to hit. All right, so moving on to the attachments that I have here on the weapon, I chose the TAC laser because it gives us a pro of aim down side speed aiming stability and aim walking steadiness this is going to be very important and essential in maximizing our aim down side speed as much as we possibly can now the only con to this is the laser being visible to your enemies we don't need to worry about this at all because of the way that we're supposed to be using this weapon which is up close and personal it's important not to aim down sights for too long and always keep your engagements as close as possible moving on to the optic i've got the gi mini reflex on here this one i highly recommend because it gives you the clearest picture overall and ease of use because you're able to aim in on your targets a lot easier moving on to the stock we've got the fly strap stock attachment this one is a must use on this weapon it's a game changer it gives us a couple pros of sprint to fire speed and your aim walking movement speed when you're engaging in medium range gunfights to strafe left and right because you have that mobility advantage over the enemies and it's going to make you a harder target to hit so always keep that in mind and make use of this attachment and take advantage of what this attachment offers moving on to my perk we have sleight of hand this is absolutely necessary especially on this aggressive type of class setup with the way that you're supposed to use this weapon there are going to be instances where you do go against multiple enemies at a time now this weapon does come with 50 rounds per magazine and it's more than enough to take out a couple enemies at a time but when you're rushing around the map and you're playing aggressive it's still a good idea to have this perk on so that you're ready for the next engagement Engagements. Lastly, we've got the stippled grip tape. This is an absolute must have on almost every single class setup. Having this attachment on gives you 134 millisecond aim down side speed, which is 33% faster than the base aim down side speed at 201 milliseconds. So this is quite obvious that this attachment is very essential for winning those gunfights, especially when you're rushing and playing a little bit more aggressive. Moving on to my secondary, I'm just using a handgun. This is all personal preference. You can use whatever you want. For my perk one, I'm using EOD, this will reduce the amount of unnecessary deaths. That's why I highly recommend using EOD, especially with the aggressive playstyle. We're going to be running around the map a lot more. And the more you run around the map, the more higher the chances are that you're going to run into stuff like claymores and proximity mines and of course C4. So that's why EOD is very important. For perk 2, I'm using Ghost, no question. Enemy is going to call in UAVs. Your location is going to be pinged on both their compass as well as their mini map. If you want to reduce the amount of deaths that you take in a game, definitely put on Ghost there is a night and day difference from when you do have this perk on versus when you have it without for perk three i'm using tracker this will help complement our aggressive play style and the way we flank and move around the map this will help us literally see those footprints and make it easier to find enemies it does help you get those easy kills so next i've got my bonus specialist perks for two kills i'm getting scavengers so i can have as much ammo as possible while i'm running around the map then at four kills we're gonna get hardline this will reduce the amount of kills it takes by one kill in order to to get
get my next specialist perk which is going to be battle hardened and this is going to be earned at five kills due to having hardline on then at seven kills we're going to earn all the perks in the game essentially making you a super soldier because you have all the perks in the game you're going to be a lot harder to kill because of that fact so moving on to lethals i've got the c4 on this is super super helpful especially when you're dealing with campers and windows you could just toss it in the window i also love using the c4 when i'm in 1v1 situations and the enemy is behind a wall or some kind of object that it's hard for me to get a lock on so i just toss the c4 right above that object or that wall and i'm able to get that easy kill or when enemies are trying to capture a flag it's an easy double or triple or sometimes a quad feed type of kill moving on to tactical i'm using stim shot this one will help us revive our health a lot faster in a lot of sticky situations and it will also keep us safe when we're trying to get back into the gunfight as fast as possible or trying to flee from a gunfight because there's multiple enemies but it will still give us that confidence that we could get away from that situation with more confidence all right so that's about it drop a like if you found this video helpful and subscribe if you're new around here and make sure to turn on notifications so you do not miss another video and i will see you guys in the next video peace